I want to go inside. I want to go inside. It was like that. It was like, I was always looking over my shoulder. Like, and so, and it had me be really successful. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. Mm. You know, it had me like driven to like get the right clothes, get the right car, find the right friends, have the right degrees, do all this. And it just like wasn't it. And Mm. at 31, I was like, I'm a, I am a full fledged adult. I'm like, I'm doing pretty well for myself and I'm fucking miserable. So what do I gotta do? What do I gotta do? And that's when my friend was like, have you ever questioned like how you, how your reality is, is made up? And I was like, I didn't even know I could. that's happened previously or anything going on right now that has like really shaped you into this person um things that happened recently um was like i had at 31 i was like deeply questioning like what the hell like is this it is like the narrow perspective that i have today the rest of my life um i have a huge peter pan syndrome like the thought of like growing up and and becoming like sedentary set my ways um and like i would say like even like what's a good word for this um like becoming what is it like when you know everything um not a know-it-all but like ah fuck i had a word for it anyways uh (laughs) but like you know like when people just like think that they they know how things are supposed to be and Mm. and all that and like and uh, the, at 31, I, like, I had, like, reached, like, the, the impasse of that. I was like, this, this can't be it. Yeah. Um, and so I, I did some exploratory work and, like, realized that, like, you know, like, nothing is defined. Um, mm. I was, like, definitely, like, trapped in my own, um, I would say, like, arrogance, I guess. Like, of, like, this is how the world is. And it yeah. was a dear friend of mine asked me, he's like, it's like, dude, are you ever curious about, like, why life shows up for you like that? And at the time, I had no idea, how, like, what the f-, f that meant. Like, yeah. I was like, what do you mean, like, how life shows up for me? Because he's like, no, like, how do you define things? How, like, how, like, uh, like honestly, it's like your Rosetta Stone of, like, how you define, like, this is a good action, this is a bad action, like, this is supposed to happen, this isn't supposed to happen, and all that. And, you know, like, so I did some work, to, like, to clear all that up. And, you know, the last five years of my life like, have been insane um, in the way that it's, like, like I know nothing and like the world has opened up and like, and I have like full, the full ability to create like who I am, like how this is gonna go, like what my experience is gonna be like. Um, and I never thought that I had that kind of, that kind of power. Um, mm. And really like anybody does have that power. Um, and it's funny cause like the, the, the flip side of that is that like how that, how my world got so like defined as like this is supposed to be happening and this isn't supposed to be happening. Um, that when I when I was exploring, like I found out, like when I wasn't. So I, I'm from California originally, and I moved to my family moved to North Carolina, like rural North Carolina, okay. when I was in like the latter half of fourth grade. Okay. And I went from like living in a really small coastal community where like I, like I grew up with everyone to being like another an outsider. Mm. Um, you know, super super gay kid, <laughs> super blonde, super like. Hey, hey stop. Come here. Um, and w- w- sorry. It's okay. You can edit that out. Or yeah. Not. Or not. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Just lay down, okay? Aww. Just be here. <laughs> Just be present. Okay. Hey. Stop. Okay. So, anyways, um, what happened was like I um, no, I went from like being like okay with who I was to like having a group of people like my peers saying that like it wasn't okay being who I was and so I had to seek an escape um and there was one other kid that was like me this kid named Eamon who like he got to leave class every day because he was special and it was like he got to go to like the smart kid classes and I was like I have to be like I need to whatever he did I need to do that yeah and it was like the first time I ever had like a goal like a real one of like I need that Mm -hmm. and so I begged my parents to to like have me um, like tested to get into the gate program, which is a gifted and talented education. 
Mm-hmm. And um, what ended up happening is that I didn't get in. And that was like such a defining moment in my life because it was like, I had it that like that, that made me into a special person. Yeah. But it was like in this, you know, cause like I, I then became like a mega overachiever where like, you know, I graduated top of my class in high school. I, you know, like straight A's across the board, like involved in everything in front of everyone, like proving, like see, see how special I am. And like, but also couldn't be with any of my accolades you know it was like it was honestly like picking up like getting the thing and be like that's not it like this is not it like i can't do that sorry about that um and what i discovered though it was it wasn't that i wasn't special it was that like that the result of that test branded me as not being special and that's like that became like ingrained in who i was and i had to fight against that for the rest of everything in every avenue like i had to be better than that i had to be better and it was like and it was like literally looking for the the new goal. And at 31, I had kind of exhausted that. Like I I made it to the parties in the hills and I was like, this can't mm, be it. Yeah. But I was like, it's almost as if I was like on the wrong side of every door. Like it's like, I don't know, have you ever like seen like an animal do that? Like they want to go outside, they want to go outside and then they get outside and they're like, I want to go there. inside, I want to yeah. go inside. Like, <laughs> right. It was like that. It was like, I was always looking over my shoulder. Like, and, so, and it had me be really successful. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. Mm. You know, it had me like, driven to like get the right clothes get the right car or find the right friends have the right degrees do all this and it just like wasn't it and mm. at 31 i was like i'm a, I am a full-fledged adult i'm like i'm doing pretty well for myself and i'm fucking miserable so what am i gonna do what do i gotta do and that's when my friend was like have you ever questioned like how you how your reality is is made up and i was like i didn't even know i could but like, but that invitation was like, honestly, like my invitation to Hogwarts, like, you know, like in real, like, it's like, I feel like somebody like tapped me on the shoulder and was like, it's not, it's not like that. And so I did, I did the work, you know, like to find out like how I had constructed, constructed my own reality. And like when you, when you see it for what it is and lay it out in front of you and realize that it's all fucking made up, it like mm-hmm. disappeared. It was like a weight off my shoulders, but it like, it took, it was I like, I, I'll emphasize it was work because right. I definitely wrestled with all those questions, like my realities. And it was like, you know, it's like, who is to blame for my unhappiness? And it was like, and I was doing all that. Like I was like, just like furious in my bathroom, when I woke up and I literally looked at myself like in the mirror when I saw myself for the first time ever as like a human being who was doing very well for himself, like, and had created like a whole life yeah and it the, like all of it just dropped it was just like and I, I think it was like the first time in my life i'd ever like really been present you know like where i was like looking around I was like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> what's happening like none of that's real none yeah. of that's happening right now nothing's happening right now i'm just standing in a bathroom yeah and it was like it all just like melted away and i was like oh and i could like breathe and yeah like you know that that you know the, all of those processes are are necessary and critical you know it's like in the same way like when you touch a hot stove you don't touch it again or if like you've got like a faulty like i in my old house i used to have this like uh electrical socket that used to always used to shock me <laughs> so like you're like really like trep like there's like a trepidation about it like Ooh, please don't do this and like but that happens in other areas of your life or like mm. you know like that's how that's how stereotypes are born or it's like how like you know how i end up being like you know if i end up in certain neighborhoods like i kind of puff up because i'm like I feel or if I'm in certain parts parts of the country mm. like am I gonna get my ass kicked for being gay like cause mm. I've been in those situations you know like I've been in a bar in the middle of nowhere and been told to leave because of the like they don't like my kind I'm like ah, okay oh my God. you know like that's happened that's real that's real life Matthew Shepard happened like there are reasons why that and there are, but that's your brain doesn't know the difference mm. you know like you know like someone calling you fat like there's some some asshole when I was 14 told me that I was fat and before that didn't know that I was fat but now then from that point forward You're like, oh. I've had a problem with my weight you mm. know like it's a become an issue because it was like a horribly embarrassing moment yeah and it's no different and but it's like but it, in seeing those mechanisms now it's like I feel like I'm like in total power and would love for people to like to get that I feel like that's where like people are going like, if people could pull their heads out of their ass, like, and really yeah. see that, like, there's nothing wrong with, like, with it, things that are happening. Right. Like, imagine if politics could do that and be like, oh there's no threat. There's nothing happening. Like, oh, and, like, maybe we don't need to, like, funnel a third of our, like, 
gross budget to the military or we could feed the fucking people on the, that are sleeping on the streets. Yeah. Like imagine if like everyone, everyone did that simultaneously and was just like, there's nothing wrong here. It's actually kind of a beautiful planet. Let, let's all just wake up. Yeah. <laughs> it would be nice. Yeah. But that's not society. At all. Yet. Yeah. Okay, so now I want to ask you an LA question. So you didn't cover exactly what you do on here, and that's fine. But since you just said that, you know, just what do you have to say about living in LA, about the experience of being out here? I am from the East Coast. It is completely different vibe. Mm -hmm. um, from what I know about LA, I have heard, I mean, obviously, you know, it's beautiful, the weather's nice, yada yada. But also, Nice? For your right, but also for your sanity and like as far as people and like meeting friends, genuine friends, meeting uh, people for a relationship, a genuine relationship. Like mm -hmm. I've heard that's hard. I heard it's like a huge knock to your ego because everybody is very just trying to get to you know yeah there. I got what things about this say. for sure. Yeah, um, like see here, the thing about LA that like is different than anywhere else, I feel. Especially, like, and let's get ourselves, like, located. I live in West Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Like, down the street from Sunset Boulevard, up the street from all the gay bars. Yeah. Like, equidistant from, like, the Rock Walk, the gay bars, and Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. Like, I can walk to either of those things in, like, two minutes. Um, it's not real. LA is not a real place. Um, and the thing to know about it here is that, like, Imagine, like, East Coast or, like, or any other big city, really, is that there are elements that you have to survive. Mm -hmm. New York, you've got excessive heat or the cold. Or, yeah. like, or anything on the East Coast, really. Like, you've got, like, it's fucking hard to live there. Like, go to Boston and, like, you're literally, you have to do something to survive it. And not here. Like, there's no immediate threat. There's a total amount of, like, abundance. You know, like... When people move here, like, what generally happens is that, like, people get sucked into this lifestyle, and all of a sudden you get all these pictures of them, like, in the hills or at pool parties and whatever, because they're part of the excess. You know, it's like the, it's like a magnetized place for people that, like, think that they can make it here. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and there's nothing to survive. So it's like, it's not like New York where, like, it's okay to, like, in New York, like, people get like when you first move there like you've got a shitty little apartment and like yeah. you go to bars and blah 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 and like you're taking the train and whatever yeah no there's like people move here and like your experience is like oh I just like get invited to all these pool parties and like and everyone's gorgeous and like and like the gym's free for me because I da 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 and I'm like and I, I never had that experience so like my first couple of years here were I was driving this like piece of shit 19, 1993 Ford Ranger that I like was given to my dad and like and you're driving around and like everyone drives a fucking bmw or a bentley or whatever like you can go to my gym and everyone's got like a mclaren and i'm like and no one works like it's crazy it's crazy oh my god my, <laughs> so i'm like you guys aren't in work like no nobody works i mean i'm getting paid right now like a lot <laughs> like but that that's part of the lifestyle you know i've also fought for it you know so yeah it's like, it's like you so you find ways to make money without having to go to work or are you, or are these people just already like by well, for family, me it's like, like generational a lot of it is though a lot of it is that you know okay. we do get like there are a lot of really rich people here or yeah. like rich dad or whatever so like you do see a hell of a lot of like g-wagons from like other states rolling around like oh like that's cute like you're from Texas and your daddy bought you a G-Wagon and now you live out here and, and that's great and you go to Equinox in the middle of the day and whatever. Mm. There's all, but then there's also people like me where it's like, you know, it, I was smart about, like I knew that I, I some, there was this interview and then I also have, um, I'm going to this wisdom course and like I'm a production designer. I don't have to be at the show. Like I built the show and I built the team and like, and now it's a self cleaning oven. It's doing its own thing. Yeah. And I'm still on payroll. But right. that's kind of the point. That's like, that's why I chose what I do is that I do have that kind of freedom. And my, my job now is to find another job. So like, you know, I had interviews yesterday and like, and I'm doing a design process and whatever. It's like, that's part of my job is these moments in between where like, it looks like I don't like, I can go to yoga at, you know, 10 30 AM and it's yeah. packed. 
and it's like, but I'm in there with like celebrities and, or like, there is a lot of excess here. And like here specifically is different than like the greater LA area. But it's like, if you go to Downey, that is, that, that is not the experience. And that's still Los Angeles. Yeah. So this is just like the anomaly of West Hollywood. Like people think of like when you're in LA, it's like here or like Venice or like downtown but that's not real. That's like the that's more of just the facade in the same way of like if you went to the Upper East Side, you're like, how is everyone so fucking wealthy? How is there everyone yeah. how does everyone have a Birkin when Birkins are impossible to buy? Yeah. Like how does that happen? Or how does that like there's this jewelry store that it in Beverly Hills that's like it's crazy because it's a real jewelry store, it's called 14 Carat and like yeah. and everything's kind of like half off. Like I think it's a wholesale place. Mm -hmm. But like people are just buying shit. Like I went in there because, like, uh, I went to buy my mom a bracelet. It was, like, $200. Mm -hmm. It was, like, worth 400 or whatever. And people are just, like, looking at, like, tennis bracelets that are $35,000. And, like, we have this one. And they're like, oh, that looks so good. And they, like, slap it on their wrist. And they've got, like, seven of those fucking love cuffs. Yeah. And I was like, how oh do you have yeah, yeah. that much stuff? Like, how do you have the like, ladies in my yoga class with these giant diamonds? And I'm like, how do you have a five-carat diamond on your hand that's probably worth $100,000? But it's not real here. It's like Dubai, you know? It's like, we're just, it's an epicenter for people of, like, of excess. And I'm sure everyone's in debt. You know, I'm in debt. We all are. I think there's a rainbow on my face. It's pretty cool. <laughs> we'll keep it. <laughs> okay, so what advice would you have for someone that wanted to move here? Uh, get ready for it. No one will help you. Um, like, everyone is taking care of themselves. And so, like, I mentioned that, you know, like, there are things to survive in other cities. Like, mm -hmm. like the cold and, like, you actually have to, like, rely on others to, like, get things done. L.A. is, like, so if you like, imagine New York being, like, a raging river that we're, like, you have got to fucking swim or yeah. you're going to get washed out. And that happens there all the time. Like, oh, people yeah. come in, they're, like, I'm living in New York. And then, like, they can't make it and they can't make rent and then they're out. Yeah. Well, not here. Here is, like, like the Dead Sea. So it's like super salty. Like all you have to do to stop, like to survive is just stop moving. You just kind of float. But you have to generate for yourself something. Like you have to self-generate constantly. Like if you stop, like if I stop like hustling, no one will call me. Like, so there are things that I have to go do. Like I went to this mixer last night. You have to go to those things. You have to mm. self-promote. You have to, and it's not even in a bad way. Like you like yeah. literally have to like, keep talk, keep your dreams alive you've got to generate that like there's you know like there's like enrollment registration conversations like you have to enroll others in what you're up to like and and enroll yourself like i have to talk about what i love about movies in order to keep myself sane when i'm making like a fast food commercial like i've got to get excited about what i'm doing otherwise it's will soul suck your soul out yeah um and you've got to surround yourself with people that like that are similarly minded like because you know, if you're not looking at your, for your back here, people will like, certainly use you. Like, you know, like they'll use your talents, they'll use your looks, they'll use mm. whatever your resources are, because like we're all trying to trying to stay afloat. Like, there's like, and you can like the other thing is like, you can like die of exposure. There, there's plenty of people here that I'm like, I'm like there used to be this blog called WeHoville, I think, mm -hmm. or WeHo Confidential, and there was this thing called like. It's like, how the fuck does blank pay the rent? <laughs> it, was like, it was like Gossip Girl, like, when yeah. that's appropriate. But it was like, I mean, because there's people here that are like, I don't get it. Like, how does this person pay their rent? Because they're like, they're out every night. They're getting photographed. They're out at all the events. How are they, like, at the Robin concert? And then they're at this premiere and doing this. But, like, how do they pay the rent? Yeah. I don't know. It's a barter system. They're getting something. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's your soul. You I know? mean, I believe that. It does happen. And, yeah, I mean, I when I... When I was fighting to be here, like, when I, because I became a production designer, like, right before the economy crumbled, and then it crumbled, and I couldn't get a job doing what I was doing, mm. and there was no jobs to be had, so it was like, I would go hiking every day. I, like, literally cut out everything that, that had anything to do with any, 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 any monetary expense that I had that wasn't needed, I cut out. So no gym, no, like, no internet, like, no anything. Like, it was just like, how can I, like, like, get, like, just survive this. Mm. Um, and I would go hiking every day because I would, like, apply for as many jobs as I could. And then I'd be, like, out of internet. Like, you know, like, I, like, searched through all the boards. And then I'd go hiking and I would just, like, be on the top of Brendan Canyon, which is, like, a 
crazy hiking trail that's like in the middle of Hollywood and like you're passing people like in their G-Wagon and whatever and I would just like scream at the city like why won't anyone fucking help me <laughs> but it's like you know you just keep hustling you keep going and then all of a sudden like I don't think I've applied for a job in years you know like my phone just rings I just I don't look for work I just I just have to be really good at what I do and I'm a hard worker and I'm under budget and like on time and all that other stuff so yeah. like I like created a brand and I, I just work and I like keep going and keep going and keep going and you know but it took something yeah it took a lot to get there mm-hmm.